Grand Rising to you all. Coming at you from Asheville, North Carolina on this beautiful, beautiful Labor Day morning in 2020. What a ride it's been for all of us, right? I've uh, taken a lot of time off from making any sort of video like this. And so it's my first time back in quite a while. And I just felt inspired to share some things around shame, some things that are arising for me. And I'm learning and receiving some really profound gifts and wisdom right now around transmuting shame into the gift. And the gift for me is really the flip side of the coin. So if there's a coin and it's shame and it's this inner critic, this voice that you know, things like, I'm not enough, or I'm not strong, or I'm not beautiful, or I don't want to speak because people will judge me. I don't want to say anything to rock the boat. I don't want, or things like, I think people think something about me, and so I won't really share what's going on inside of my heart. So shame is like this this um, inner critic that causes us to hide. And so when you look at like the flip side of this, it's not hiding. It's vulnerability is really the flip side to the shame coin. And vulnerability is such a precious, amazing, powerful gift that will not only lift ourselves up out of the inner critic, but it will bring light and inspiration and connection and love to all the people around you. All of your relationships will be more fulfilled as a result of you stepping into vulnerability. And so, um, yeah, I feel compelled to just share vulnerably this morning and just say that, um, I've been, I've been in like this potent, potent accelerator, like over the last probably, uh, probably close to a month now, at least three weeks, and um, I found myself in this cycle, this um, pattern of mine that uh, creeps up, has crept up in my life ever since I really started doing spiritual work and trying to learn more about myself, trying to find my way to God within myself. And in that process and in that work, um, I've been in relationship with, I was in a long-term relationship for four and a half years, and more recently, another long-term relationship for 10 months. And in relationship, I've I've struggled with with something in particular that I I kind of had bits and pieces and ideas of what was going on but I wasn't able to fully own my own inner wound and how that showed up in relationship until the finality of the most recent relationship which happened last week and so sometimes like coming to a place of extreme pain and loss and death and having to experience losing the, the one thing that you valued more than anything else in your life, love, connection, intimacy, partnership, these things were really valuable to me. Um, even even beyond the partnership, like a sense of family and home, belonging, um, being a part of the tribe, having a tribe, having a person, having people to call your own. Um, one of my shame cycles inside is I'm alone, that I'm not worthy of belonging, I'm not worthy of partnership and love and family 
And so I had to take a deep dive in uh, this week in particular. And through the pain, I came to a place of um, looking at my mother wound. Well, it's really, it's really a combination of father wound and mother wound. Um, my parents um, are beautiful people, amazing people. I love them so much and I, I appreciate um, the gift of life that they gave me. I appreciate everything they did to, to raise me, to become the man that I am today. And yeah, I just want to first of all give a shout out to mom and dad for like um, making it through some of what I'm going to talk about. They're still married today and they're still an inspiration to me today in the way that they move through life together, the way that they walk and they pray together and they, they pray for their kids, they pray for me every day and I, I love them so much. And, um, you know, they definitely had their own shadows. We all do. I have mine, they have theirs, you have yours. And early in their marriage, um, they had a lot of trouble finding a uh, connection together. And they had a cycle of chaos. They had a, a cycle of a lot of fighting. Um, I just remember just the sheer terror and... Um, fear that I had at such a young age um, probably when I was an infant most definitely when I was a toddler and and um, as I grew up and I mean it took a long time for things to calm down in my household and I remember times when my dad would would leave sometimes for days in anger and I was scared like is, is is this the end of my family? Are mom and dad going to break up? Divorce? What's going to happen to me then? What's my life going to be like then? Like it was a matter of survival as a child. Like these two people, the ones that love me, the ones that sustain my life are fighting violently. And it's really scary. So I, I remember myself in like a, a very terrifying um, traumatized sort of frozen state just huddled up in my room in a ball just holding myself and waiting waiting for the, the peace and the calm to come after the storm the storm was so intense and, and so much and it it was it was happening so much and it it distorted this view of love for me because, you know, the people who love me and the people who love each other and came together in love to create me are not really showing up in a, in a loving way in their in their life in these in these moments. And so, when I would sit there and I would wait for the calm to come. I was also waiting for my mother who would come to me after these storms and she would hold me, hold me close and, and tell me things like, you're okay, we, we're going to be okay. Dad and I are going to be okay. The family is going to be okay. We love each other. We love you, I love you and what happened to me psychologically is I created this um, this pattern in my mind that if there's chaos and there's fighting and there's disconnection and destruction and, and all of this craziness, that on the other side of that will be something really beautiful. Emotional intimacy, connection, love, somebody to hold me. And that's, um, that particular loop, that trauma loop that was stored inside of me has shown up in, in my relationships over the last five to six years. And the way that shows up is I will experience disconnection 
and experience a longing within me, like something inside of me that's just, I just wish I could find my way to peace with my beloved. I wish I could find my way to a place of emotional connection and emotional intimacy with my beloved. I just want to sit with her in a calm way and just share what we're feeling, like we're both hurt. We're both experiencing some form of pain, some form of emotion that's creating tension between us, disconnection between us. And when I struggle to get that, whether, you know, she, she needs time or she needs space or maybe she needs to, to be emotional or stormy or um, what, whatever it might be, if I'm not able to get that, that calm, centered, balanced space of connection between us, then my inner child begins to come online and I start to feed the disconnection. Why? Because the disconnection, when it was fed when I was little, when I, when I um, experienced all of the chaos and the storms and the, and the tra traumatizing fighting in the house, then eventually that would lead to the peace that I needed. It would lead to being held. It would lead to, to being loved. And so that's what I would do in relationship when the connection was not available. I would feed that storm. I would feed the disconnect. I would start to become angry and hurtful and I would be disconnecting and I would push her away and I would um, sometimes even break up with my beloved. Like I would just bring things to a complete end because it's not that I wanted to end things. That's the opposite of what I wanted. What I really wanted was that space for us to come to emotional intimacy, to, to connection together, to love. And so I would feed the vicious cycle of violence and, and destruction. And then afterward I would wait in my tension in my pain, in my traumatized, um, triggered, activated self as this small child that I, I became in those moments. I just waited. I held myself frozen, waiting as a 43-year-old man. And I don't want to show up in my life like that. That's not who I am. The, the truth of me is that I, I need to be the calm. I need to be what my mother was after the storm. I need to be before the storm and through the storm and after the storm. I need to be the one to reach out and say, hey, we're gonna be okay. I'm, I'm okay, you're okay. We're going to get through this together. I love you. All I want with you is connection. That's it. And I'm not going to choose to react. I'm not going to choose to feed uh, a cycle of violence and destruction. I'm going to choose to find my peace inside. Find that truth. Find the, find the God that lives in me who is peace. Allow God to come online in my life as calm, as someone that can hold the space for whatever emotions are arising, without reactivity, without feeding chaos and violence and destruction. And so through this vulnerable expression, of what I'm coming to realize in my life and what I'm coming to, to heal in my life, I'm unwinding my shame. I'm unwinding the voice that says, you, you suck at relationship. You can't get yourself together in relationship. You are too emotional. You're too destructive. You're too hurtful. You, you are, are continuously pushing the woman that you love so much in your life away 
and that feeds this this wounded inner child and just get makes them bigger and more resentful and more hurt and more angry and more frustrated and I'm, I'm done with that I've had enough I've had enough of the shame side of the coin I've had enough of feeding the storm and now I choose to be calm I choose to be peace I choose to be strength in holding a powerful container for healing with my beloved and I and even before my beloved and I for me I choose to hold a container of peace for my own healing I choose to step into that container of peace and I choose to be vulnerable and I choose to share because when I share with others then we activate each other you'll hear my story and hear your parts of yourself I'll hear your story and hear parts of myself because the God in me is the same God in you that's here living and breathing inside of us to wake us all up to wake us all up to the truth of what we are so that we can live the highest possibilities for our lives that's what we're here to do you know back before this like five or six year cycle of um, difficulty and challenge in relationships I was um, working with groups of people and bringing circles together for vulnerability specifically to, to was creating containers for safety for sacred sharing for people to learn more about who they are through the reflection of others and now that I'm coming through this wound and really um, working with my trauma and working with my pain and beginning to transmute it and beginning to to embrace the other side of the, the coin here in my own life I'm um, inspired to, to do that again I'm inspired to bring groups of people together to talk about all sorts of topics you know things like what I just talked about staying close and connected and finding our way back to love and relationship without horrible violent cycles or things like finding our way to service a greater level of purpose and significance in our life like bringing God and ourselves online so that we can be the, the highest possibility and the brightest most colorful light unique light that we are no more hiding like I don't want to hide I know you don't want to hide in your life and so I'm going to be starting these groups again and so this video is really just my first coming back to my own soul's purpose my own soul's essence my own colorful bright unique light that I'm here to be and um, thank you for witnessing thank you for hearing me I would love to actually talk with some of you and, and share and have vulnerable conversations together so that we can lift each other up um, I think there'll be opportunity for us to maybe even jump on some zoom calls together and do some live vulnerability exercises um, so yeah uh, leave a comment below let me know you know what's what's happening for you what's arising in you as you hear me share vulnerably um, let's um, let's bring that God self online in our life in a huge way I love you all have a great day